Hello everyone in this video let us talk about uh, tools that you need for learning Groovy. So in the previous video we talked about uh, doing some setup basically uh, we discussed how to install Groovy on different uh, platforms like uh, Windows Linux or Mac and uh, we also uh, quickly uh, looked at uh, the Groovy console. So in this video, I want to continue uh, sharing few other things, uh, especially tools that you need or you can use for learning uh, Groovy. So if let us say you don't really want to do any installation, uh, you can still uh, do some learning. Uh, although I don't really recommend uh, you to use uh, this for uh, a long time. If you if you're serious about learning Groovy, then you should install it on your computer. But Sometimes you need to do some quick checks or maybe uh, you need a way to uh, do some uh, uh, troubleshooting or maybe you need to just execute some code. So there is something called as a Groovy uh, web console that you can uh, use. Uh, of course, you need to uh, have internet connection at least. So if you click on this link or if you do a quick uh, Google search, uh, just search for Groovy web console, you will be uh, taken to this uh, to this page, this uh, uh, Groovy console dot uh, appspot.com so basically this is uh, the url that uh, you can uh, use uh, if you want to access uh, this uh, <coughs> interface now uh, this is something similar to your groovy console but it is of course on web what you can do you can uh, uh, just uh, write some uh, quick uh, groovy script here if you want to let us say do some testing in case you are uh, uh, following uh, any tutorial uh, i mean if you talk about uh, doing things like uh, uh, you know maybe you want to perform some calculation or maybe you want to see how strings work in uh, groovy you can definitely use the web console i mean uh, it is quite good for uh, for learning purpose but again having something installed on your local computer is always great so let us say if you want to run something like this like define i is equal to the URL of this particular uh, web console, um, Groovy web console, you can do that. And you, if you run it, you will get the output here. So uh, this works quite nicely. And uh, and I don't really see any problem here. Uh, I mean, um, it is really great for doing something very quickly. But I, of course, want to talk about uh, uh, web console and, of course, uh, the Groovy console that you will anyways will be able to use when you uh, install Groovy. So after you install Groovy, you can just run this command, which we did in the previous video. So I'll not really spend too much time on uh, on doing uh, a tour of a Groovy console. We will have more opportunities uh, later in this uh, video series for uh, uh, looking at uh, different uh, uh, things that you, that you can do with Groovy console. But we'll be spending most of the time with IntelliJ. So let's spend some time today on IntelliJ. And uh, if you want to learn... Uh, Groovy, this is uh, definitely a recommended uh, IDE because uh, you it, it will actually make your life much more easier. It will have uh, code completion, it will have syntax highlighting, and uh, you will enjoy working on IntelliJ. Now, the the moment you install IntelliJ, and by the way, IntelliJ works on uh, Windows, Mac, and uh, and also on Linux. So you have a lot of uh, capabilities. Uh, for uh, using, I mean, you have a lot of lot of uh, options when it comes to IntelliJ. So it depends on your uh, operating system. If you click on this uh, download button, this link here on uh, the website, you have the option to use, uh, or you have the option to install the, f the, the, the ultimate version, which is uh, not really free, but I recommend you to take a look at the community version, which is, I believe, more than enough for doing uh, development um, and, of course, learning. So install the community edition, use it, and enjoy learning Groovy. So let us uh, continue uh, taking a look at uh, what we need to do in the beginning of uh, uh, using IntelliJ. So using IntelliJ is very easy, and uh, all you need to, need to do, you need to install and launch IntelliJ. And the moment you launch IntelliJ, you will get uh, 
uh, an option to create a project. So it, it will give you a dialog box. Uh, and uh, if I show you how it looks like, so when you create a new project in uh, IntelliJ, the first thing that you need to do is you need to specify your project SDK. And uh, since we have been talking about uh, a prerequisite for uh, learning Groovy, you need uh, Java, you need uh, JDK. So just specify your project uh, SDK as uh, the path where you installed your JDK. And if you're not sure about this path, just uh, try to run or try to take a look at your Java home variable. So with we, I mean, when you install Java, when you set up JDK, uh, you need to point your Java home, Java underscore home variable, environment variable in uh, in Windows to your JDK folder. And if you're installing uh, Java using the installer, it will be set for you. So if you're not sure about the location, just, uh, you know, try to find your Java home. And I can show you uh, how it works. If I quickly uh, do echo, and if I try to print my Java underscore home, it will give me a location. So this is the location that I need to use uh, in case I want to use, uh, uh, in case I want to specify the uh, location of my project SDK. The second thing is uh, Groovy. Uh, so you need to specify the location where you installed uh, Groovy. And uh, if you're not sure about the location, what you can do, you can, and, and by the way, I'm doing it on, uh, on uh, Mac. So on Mac, you can do, or Linux, I believe, you can do uh, uh, which Groovy, and it will give you this location. So on Mac, the location is actually, uh, it is usually, I mean, if you have, if you are using Brew, or maybe SDK Man, so they will be, uh, uh, they will be this hidden folder called SDK Man, and uh, while you are configuring this, or maybe if you are on Mac, and if you're not sure how to find it, or find hidden folders, you can actually use a command called command shift and uh, the dot on your Mac. So the moment you press command shift and dot, it will display all the hidden folders and and uh, hidden files. So once you do these these two things, and by the way, of course, select on the left-hand side Groovy. And uh, once you do these uh, two things, if you click on next, uh, you can uh, specify the project name and you can specify the location where you want to uh, set up this project. And the moment you set up this project, you will get uh, on the left hand side, if you look at your in, your IntelliJ, uh, you will get uh, some kind of uh, this uh, directory listing. So right now my Groovy project is called as Groovy only, but it is inside my projects folder, followed by Groovy. And uh, you will have different, uh, uh, different uh, folders here. What I recommend you to do in the beginning, if you uh, click on the SRC folder, right click on it and just create a new package. So when you create a new package, uh, just name it as maybe something like IN dot, uh, um, I mean, this is of course up to you how you want to define it. But uh, uh, what you can do here is you can uh, create this package. And uh, when you create a package in, uh, in Groovy, people who are familiar with the uh, development in Java, I'm sure uh, it is something similar. Uh, but the, the whole purpose of creating a package is that it will make uh, the organization of files uh, uh, much more uh, easier. So just a recommendation, you don't have to do it. But if you create a package, something like uh, in.ravisaga.masteringgroovy, or it could be uh, com dot example dot learning groovy anything that you like just do that and if you do this it will actually create uh, you know this uh, folder and within this folder you can uh, create a new file let us say i want to create a new groovy script i can uh, give this groovy uh, this, this groovy script a name like uh, demo video dot uh, i mean you don't have to specify the uh, the extension uh, name, but the moment you do it, you will get uh, this uh, file added in this uh, directory, in.ravisaga.masteringgroovy. Uh, and uh, if you if you try to run this, uh, uh, right now, of course, there is nothing inside, but if you do a simple uh, print, uh, uh, print L and uh, print LN, and if you try to print, uh, let us say, just a string maybe, and if you <clears throat> right click on it and uh, select uh, this option called uh, run. So if you do this, it will uh, run this for you. 
and you will get uh, an output uh, within your uh, IntelliJ. So you can see here that uh, we are able to print Ravi Sagar. You can of course do wonderful things. This is uh, something uh, very simple and uh, very basic that I'm doing here, but uh, uh, this is the place where you will, uh, I mean, this is the, the, the thing that you will need to do in the beginning to set up, let us say, uh, a very simple file uh, and uh, test it out, whether it is working for you. So you can continue adding some code, very simple code. And, and I think right now we are trying to set up things in, uh, in IntelliJ and we'll be using IntelliJ for doing a lot of uh, wonderful things and uh, let me just uh, try to print it for you so you can see the output and uh, and by the way if you are uh, looking at uh, this uh, this piece of code uh, you must have noticed, no, noticed that I'm not really using semicolons to uh, end the statement here because uh, you don't have to. So this is something that is uh, really uh, interesting. Groovy will, uh, will uh, I mean, when you're using Groovy and if you're trying to compare it with Java, uh, you don't have to end the statement with the semicolon. So this is something that you should know. And uh, uh, you can see, of course, the output here. So right now, um, IntelliJ is set up and uh, we, will, uh, we will continue looking at uh, what all uh, we can do with uh, uh, with the uh, uh, groovy hand will continue the learning so in the next video let us uh, talk about uh, some fundamentals of uh, of groovy and uh, let us uh, continue uh, understanding how the uh, i mean how how to start basically uh, the how to basically start uh, learning groovy with uh, some uh, good understanding of uh, things like uh, you know, variable things like uh, basic programming constructs. I am creating these video series where I am uh, not really uh, expecting you to have a lot of programming experience, but uh, it is always good to uh, learn a new language. And if you're coming from a different language, learn, learning Groovy is, of course, uh, it will be much simpler for you. But I will try to also talk about some basic things like programming constructs. I'll probably talk about uh, wherever I can. Uh, in between, I'll try. I'll, I'll try to explain uh, things like you know what are loops. So, uh, so, so we'll be discussing a lot of things in in future videos. But uh, uh, my purpose is to create these videos with uh, uh, with the intention to teach it or to share my knowledge uh, with uh, someone who has no previous development background or maybe programming background. But of course, you want to learn. So, if you want to learn, if you are keen in uh, learning uh, Groovy. Then I, I'm sure you, I'm sure, or my intention is that uh, you should be able to learn it uh, uh, by watching my videos. And uh, at the same time, not just uh, the videos, I will be also preparing uh, some kind of a documentation. And I'm not really trying to replicate or uh, repeat what you can find already um, in detail when you look at the official documentation or official uh, uh, guides. I want to give you a very uh, uh, concise uh, starting point so that you can uh, pick up yourself and I want to make it easier and comfortable for you to uh, basically learn this language and uh, if you know Groovy and then you can of course do wonderful things uh, uh, especially if you want to do some automation. So let us continue the learning and uh, I hope you found this video useful and uh, I sincerely hope that you learned something new today. Thank you very much. Thank you